This tutorial video focuses on reducing balance loans and we'll be just looking at the basics of how a reducing balance loan works. So we've got the following scenario. Molly takes out a $5,000 loan from her bank. She pays an interest rate of 12% per annum but it's interest debited monthly. In this example Molly makes no additional payments. Let's consider the first month and we're looking to create a loan schedule for the first 10 months of the loan to see what happens to Molly's amount that she's borrowed. So in the first month, let's look at this from an annuities approach. The principal is $5,000. The compounding or growth factor is going to be 1.01 .01, and that's simply because our rate must also be in the same terms of monthly. So 12% per year divided by 12 months of the year takes it back to 1% per month. So we have a growth factor or compounding factor of 1% per month. The number of months in this case is 1 because it's for the first month only. We put this into our annuities formula which really is just the same as a simple interest at this stage because we have no additional payments being made and we find that at the end of the first month that Molly has now owed the bank $5,050 so she's actually increased um, the amount owing the bank and that makes sense because she's no, made no additional payments. We could look at this in terms of our financial solver with a calculator as well. This we look at our menu, finance, finance solver. Okay let's have a look at this. We start off with one month Interest rate must be in percent per annum for the finance solver, so we'll put in as 12% per annum. The present value is a $5,000. It's positive because the money is coming from a cash flow from the bank to Molly. There's no additional payments being made. The future value is what we're trying to calculate. And because it's monthly, debited monthly, it will be payments per year 12 and compounding period per year 12 as well. Payment made at the end. So the future value is, in fact, minus 5050. So this indicates that Molly still owes the bank, because it's negative, $5,050, which is exactly what we would predicted using the annuities formula. Okay, we started with a debt of $5,000, and at the end of the first month Molly owes the bank $5,050, so she has been charged $50 interest for the first month. So if we look at this uh, loan schedule, we can see that at the end of the month, that's what the AOM stands for, our starting position was $5,000. At the end of the first month, Molly has an interest of $50, so she now owes $5,050. Let's consider the second month. This time she starts with a debt of $5,050. The same rate applies, the same growth factor rather. And again, one more month. So now when we put this into our equation, we find that at the end of the second month, Molly's um, debt was originally $5,000. In the end of the first month, it was $5,050. the end of the second, it's now $5,100.50. Now that's using the previous month's end balance as a starting point for this second month. Alternatively, as we've done before, we could consider the original principle of 5000 and looking at two compounding periods, so it's the rate of 1.02 raised to the power of 2, it also gives you the same amount owing at the end of the cent uh, sorry, the same amount owing at the end of the second month. Comparing the end of the second month from the end of the first, we can see that $50.50 interest has been added in the second month. So again, our interest and our new balance at the end of the second month. Let's look at this one more time for the third month, the same starting point we've got this time at the end of the second, the debt was $5,100.50, the rate remains the same and again for one more month, place that into our compound interest formula, at the end of the third month we'll now have a debt of $5,151.51. Or again alternatively we could look at the original amount of $5,000 and look at three compounding periods of 1.01 .01 as a growth factor. It will also predict a debt at the end of the third month of $5,151.51. So you can see again, comparing um, the debt at the amounts owing 
at the third month compared to the amount of the second month, the interest charge in the third month has in fact gone up yet again. So you can look at the schedule here and it's got up to $51.01 in the, by the end of the third month and you can see our balance is increasing. Now if we were to continue this forward doing exactly the same thing for each of the 10 months using our more simple alternative method which looks at the original amount and the number of compounding periods for 4 to 5 to 6 to 7. We can see now as an overall schedule um, how Molly's loan is in fact getting bigger, bigger and bigger. We could have probably forecast that earlier had we gone back with our finance, uh, with our CAS calculator rather, and simply typed in 5,000, one, two, three zeros, press enter. Now go to multiply that, and so it brings up the answer, which is the previous value, previous value of 5,000, and multiply that by 1.01, .01, and press enter. So as you remember, our first month has a debt of 5050 and if we press enter again it'll take that value and multiply that by 1.01 .01. so our second month was 5150 cents third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth and tenth so by the time you get to the tenth month the debt is five thousand five hundred and twenty three dollars and eleven cents and here we see in our table from our calculations indeed $5,523.11. So that's one way of forecasting quickly um, a compounding interest using your calculator. What we notice is that using this strategy the amount Molly owes has increased every month and it started at 5000 at the end of 10 months is up to $5,523.11. So she'll never pay off her loan using this technique. What she's actually doing is accruing debt the interest is accumulating much like a savings account, only in this case it's money that Molly owes, so the debt is increasing rather than saving. So in order to reduce the balance of the loan, Molly needs to make regular repayments. So in the second part, let's consider the same arrangement with a $5,000 loan, paying an interest rate of 12% per annum, interest debited monthly. However, in this scenario, we've, inc we've included Molly's monthly instalments of $500. So in month one, Molly will pay $500 to the bank. And we want to look at what is the balance at the end of the month of the first month. We know she starts with a balance of $5,000 owing. We can use our equation to work out the interest charged, $5,000, raised, sorry, multiplied by the growth factor of 1.01 .01, and again it comes out to $5,050 so she's been charged $50 interest for that first month. At the end of that addition of interest Molly makes a payment of $500. So overall she started with $5,000 she acquires $50 interest and then she makes a payment of $500, leaving an end of monthly balance of $4,550. Second month, Molly once again makes another payment of $500. So in this case, we take our end, sorry, the end of the previous month is the start of this month with a debt of $4,550. We multiply that by the growth factor of 1.01 .01, and we find that that interest raises our amount owing from $4,550 to $4,595.50 which gives us interest of $45.50. At the end of that addition of interest Molly makes a payment of $500 which reduces um, her balance further at the end of the second month to $4,095.90 uh, sorry and 50 cents rather as can be seen month three yet another five hundred dollars is being paid and again you can see that the amount of interest charged here when we take the four thousand ninety five dollars and fifty cents and multiply that by the growth factor of one point zero one it comes out to an amount owing of four thousand one hundred and thirty six dollars and forty six or rather an interest of forty dollars and ninety six cents upon the original starting balance of the month a further five hundred dollars is paid off so at the end of the third month the balance will be $3,636.46. You can continue to follow this procedure so forth and you'll see that eventually over 10 payments 
Molly's nearly completely paid off a loan that was once initially at $5,000. Now, after 10 monthly payments of $500, with interest being added monthly, um, we have a debt of only $292. You can see with this strategy, there's a, a decreasing amount owed every month, and Molly will in fact eventually pay off this loan. It's also um, pretty clear that as each month goes past, the amount of interest being charged is less and less and less because it's taken against the balance at the start of that month. This means the amount of money each of the $500 paid, less and less is being paid in interest and more and more is being used to pay off the outstanding balance. We could also use our calculator with a finance solver. to check and see how this works as well. So we might want to check, for example, what is the balance, say, at the 10th month at an interest rate of 12% per annum. Again, it's got to be per annum. The present value we started with was $5,000. It's a positive because it's a cash flow heading towards Molly. The payment being made, on the other hand, is a negative, and it was $500 per period per month and it was 12 payments per year and 12 compounding periods per year. So after 10 months with $500 payments and interest rate of 12% per annum, Molly only has $292 being owed. And we go back here, our prediction using our original um, equation, annuity equation was in fact $292. One task, let's calculate the account balance after six months using both the annuities formula and the TI Inspire calculator finance solver. First of all, the annuities formula. We have a principal of 5,000, a growth rate of 1% per annum, or a growth factor rather. Sorry, 1% per month. My, my mistake. Payments of $500 per month for six months. We place that into the equation and it predicts that um, after six months, Molly's account balance would be $2,331.59 outstanding after two after six months rather. If we use our finance solver, we can put in the six months. Interest rate per annum is twelve. Present value is five thousand. Again it's positive because it's cash flow. We have five hundred dollars being paid. So it's a minus, it's a negative value. Twelve periods per year, 12 compounding periods per year as well. And we want to calculate at the end of the payment what our future value is. Let's have a go at this one. First of all, we'll clear our previous information. So six months, at an interest rate of 12% per annum, present value of $5,000 payments of 500 negative because we're paying the bank future value when we have 12 payments per year and 12 compounding periods per year finance solver tells us that we expect a debt of $2,231.59 okay so after six months the outstanding balance using the finance solver is also $2,331 and 59 cents outstanding. Both techniques are fine as long as you're aware what units to use for the end, the number of terms, and I the interest. The final calculation we'd like to make is to work out how long it would take Molly to fully repay this loan. So it's 12% per annum, present value of 5,000, payments, a minus value or a negative value rather, of $500 per month. We want a future value of zero, meaning it's completely paid up. 12 payments per year, 12 compounding periods, and we want to work out at the end of it how many months um, this is taking because we are using this as uh, 12 periods per year and compounding periods per year, or payments per year rather. So it's a monthly calculation. Let's have a go at this one on our finance solver. Again, we'll delete what we have in there at the moment. The number of uh, months left blank, 12%. The present value is $5,000, the payment was $500, and it's a negative. The future value one is zero, fully paid out. 12 payments per year, 
12 compounding periods per year and payment at the ends. We hit that and it comes out to 10.59 months. Okay, so 10.5 months time, the loan will be paid in full. That's using the TI Inspire calculator finance solver to work this out.